Yeah, crazy tour story continued about when we, the, uh, the, the tour bus, man, when we toured the tour bus up. Not, not, it was a revengeful thing. It was like, you know, we had yeah. to, some, rach, some racial tension from the tour bus owner. I mean, the tour bus owner, uh, well, the, the driver, right? He was calling back and uh, you know how on tour, you know, you, you pay the money, you got to give them gas money and all that. There was some discrepancy with the money. He's calling back, but he got the owner on speakerphone and he straight up called us monkeys. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, tell, yeah. Those, yeah, yeah. tell those fucking monkeys to <laughs> sub, blah, blah, blah. And we sitting there listening to it, right? Like, we already mad because the, their service wasn't wasn't working out. Right. So, you know, we, we like, all right, monkeys. We're going to show you how monkeys act, man. Mm -hmm. So we went on the tour bus, and we had some, some homies, you know, from Ohio, family from Ohio, come up on the bus. We was like, whatever y'all want on here, <laughs> it's yours. Just, I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah, tour buses them. got TVs or radio, VCR, all that VCR, DVD uh, players. They took the driver's clothes, his car heart uh, <laughs> jacket. They, they took his car oh, heart like vest, bus, you know. <laughs> So the, the driver, you know, the next day, he's like, hey, look, man, there's really nothing I can say about this. this is, I don't own this bus, blah, 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 but can I just get my vest back? Yeah. <laughs> so we called the homies. They brought him his vest back. You know what I'm saying? Got him his vest back. He was cool, exactly. whatever. That owner owed us. He owed us money, you know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. so we took it out on so his bus. Was. The tour bus was winning, so we had to party in it. Yeah. We sent that shit back off fucked up and did it. <laughs> yeah, and we was out with Biggie, you know what I'm saying? So Rest in peace. For sure, for sure. Yeah. Now that was a crazy, especially the show here in Chicago. Yeah, the show was here was phenomenal. legendary. I, I Where, what happened there. to the break? Did the bar break or something? Oh, yeah. yeah. They oh, that's what happened. They said, yeah. I think was Biggie was on. Right was on. We were downstairs in the, in the dressing room, and yeah. the club was directly <laughs> upstairs. I don't remember the name of it. The dressing room was like a basement, so we was underneath the signs. We, we was hearing it because it, it was hella people on top of us. So mm -hmm. we was thinking, like, this motherfucker might cave in or some shit. As soon as we thinking that, what happened to the bar upstairs? It just started no, leaking. We heard, we heard, like, some first hands. Biggie's wow, performing, because right. we have performed, yeah. so mm -hmm. he's performing. And all of a sudden we hear the music stops and you can hear it's a fight. Blah, blah, bam, 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 bam. <laughs> Glasses start breaking, so you keep hearing it, don't stop. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Suddenly you start seeing dripping come from the ceiling. The ceiling. Just drip, 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 and they like, wouldn't let us go upstairs. <laughs> they wouldn't let us go back upstairs. Mm -hmm. We would like, grab a cup. No, I was leaking liquor through the whole bottom of the floor. Man, that was crazy. Why that was crazy. See yeah. That was sick. Yeah, a, a memorable moment from the um, Biggie tour, besides all the performances and just being with him every day, him and him and, and Puff, was when they told us about um, how King T was a big influence on him yeah. rapping. And mm -hmm. he told us personally from his mouth, him, him and Puffy was like, um, he got his influence from Big, from uh, King T. He's like, if you listen to our rap, sounds like King T. He was like, I was, all I used to listen all to. All I used to listen to was King T. That was my shit. Like, you can ask anybody. And then when, now when you listen to Biggie and you listen to King T song from, you know, it's like, damn. It's a trip if you, if you they play really right have a back, similar You can tell Biggie got, sound. you know what I'm saying, something, you know what I mean? But Yeah, it was crazy. You put him on the phone with King T one time and he told him the same shit. Mm -hmm. But when I first heard Party and Bullshit, I noticed it immediately. Mm -hmm. How he was changing his pitch of his voice. I like T would be doing that. that. He was the only one I really knew that did that. You know? Yeah. Man. What I remember about that tour too, it was that it really showed me that um like perception of somebody is different. Like when Biggie came out with that gangster shit, like with, with the first couple songs before the juicy and all that, niggas was really scared of this one. Like they were scared of Biggie. But we was on tour and got to know him and shit. And he's like the nicest motherfucker on earth, mm -hmm. but people be like, hey, can, uh, can, is it cool if I walk up to Biggie and ask? I said, I don't know, you said, like, go ask him. Right. <laughs> for autograph with it. Like, they was really shook. Mm -hmm. And we get behind the door, he had that little persona, like, I can see how motherfucker would be, like, watch that nigga, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we go smoke behind closed doors and be cracking jokes, and just like a regular motherfucker. Like, the fame didn't really get to him like that, you know what I'm saying? He was right. like a, a regular old real, real fun motherfucker, you know? Rest in peace to him. Um, Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I'm gonna say recipes. Five dog too. We were talking about Tri Car Quest, right. ODB.